Hi, I'm Don Holman. I've worked for McKinstry five years, and everybody makes an impact on McKinstry safety, whether you've been on the job for one day as an apprentice or all the way through your career. McKinstry's new hire safety orientation will take about 30 minutes to complete. We want you to walk away knowing that McKinstry is unique in its approach to safety. We're always looking to get better. We want you to go home safe to your family every night. There will be some quizzes along the way, so you'll want to pay attention. And you will need to sign saying that you've listened to the entire orientation and that you understand what we're talking about. So here we go. is that safety is owned by each and every one of us, from the top of the company to the bottom. We're all responsible not only for our own personal safety, but for the safety of those working around us. We want you to come to work each day, accomplish your work, and go home in the same fashion, hopefully tired, but in the same fashion as when you arrived. If we embrace safety with this type of approach, everything we do at McKinstry gets better. Pre-task planning forces us to think about our work, remove obstacles and waste. The quality of our workmanship improves, and ultimately the cost of what we deliver to our customer is lowered. Safety is a classic win-win for a company like McKinstry. Our customers are concerned about safety and have high expectations for us as a supplier that we view safety the same way they do. Welcome to McKinstry. Be safe. Think about it on a daily basis and enjoy yourself. Right, I'm Michael Flores. I'm the director of the Southwest Region. We're in a fun, fun industry, but it's an industry that's filled with risk. Uh, and if we don't take that risk seriously, we end up maybe doing something that puts somebody in harm's way uh, that may be irreversible. So McKinstry has done a tremendous job of putting the resources together that allow us to really put that holistic plan together. And if we just simply follow those steps, uh, we'll find that we can put in place uh, the right plan of action that allows us to keep our people safe, have fun on the job, do good things for clients, and ultimately do everything we said we were going to do uh, to exceed customer expectations in a safe in a safe way. Yeah, my name is Jeremy Jeanette. Uh, I'm a plumbing foreman, and I've been in the plumbing industry for 25 years. What, I've been with McKinstry for about a year and a half now, and uh, you know the, the big difference I see is their their, their commitment and focus to safety. Um, you know our previous jobs, uh, we've uh, kind of taken the position of you know we, we we've done this for years, we know what we're doing, uh, so not, not a whole lot of pre-task planning uh, unless it was something that that uh, significantly worried us. Um, where uh, McKinstry kind of takes the proactive position of, of uh, wanting to, to be more involved and pre-plan things and they're committed to getting you the help you need if you do have questions. Um, it's really just an overall supportive environment. Um, Pre-job planning is probably the single most important tool um, to sending people home safely every day. When it's used properly, uh, it should never be looked at as a chore or just a piece of paper that you're filling out to keep yourself out of trouble. If that's the way you're looking at pre-job planning, you know, you need to reevaluate it and, and really start over and do something different because it should be a tool that organizes your thoughts, helps you get your material, your tools, everything that you need to your work site so that you can work safely. On pre-task planning on an everyday scale, if uh, people are working like teams of two or even individual, um, say retrofit for instance, uh, you go into a building and go to pipe some heating coils, <clears throat> you would be used soldering, so our policies are have a burn permit, you know, take the time to see what kind of fire system is in the building. Are you gonna set off an alarm? 
you know, make those contacts prior to work. And that's the first thing. Even if you can't work, if you can't make the contacts, don't do it. Hi, I'm Bob Eggert. I uh, am an operations manager for McKinstry in our energy division. Prior to this role, um, I was a senior construction manager and subsequent to that a construction manager um, with the company. Been with the company for six years. The thought that comes to mind immediately regarding safety and kind of our philosophy and co corporate culture um, and my personal philosophy is it, it needs to be about self-preservation as a primary objective. Um, we can't make our employees be safe. What we can do is influence them to think about safety, uh, about preserving themselves uh, primarily, and then secondly, it's our expectation that once they embrace that philosophy, um, then they can also work towards helping others do the same. Um, it gets down to be actually caring about yourselves, caring about the people around you, and to the point where subconsciously you're looking for those hazards that's going to prevent you from uh, staying healthy, prevent your uh, peers and coworkers and different subcontractors and subconsultants that you work with from being healthy. And so we want our people to constantly be thinking about it. Why do I want to be healthy? Why do I care if all my limbs are attached? Um, that to me, if people can get to that point, then safety becomes more than just a, uh, a bunch of words that we talk about. I, um, I've seen safety grow a lot with McKinstry in the last few years, uh, the last five, six years actually. Um, I think people take it more seriously here. Um, I think part of that success is empowering our people um, to uh, let them know that it's okay to actually stop work if we need to. Um, I empower you. Uh, as a new employee to do the same. If you see something you don't like, you're uncomfortable with, regardless of what the cost or outcome could be, you are empowered to stop work immediately and notify the people that need to know about the hazard that exists. My name is Eric Bondo. I'm a construction manager with McKinstry. Uh, during all of our new hire orientations, I let everybody know that uh, McKinstry empowers all of our employees to take safety on as their own on every project. An example of that would be down at our uh, Whitman County project. We had a sheet metal guy that was cutting some penetrations in some roofs and had uh, called me to notify me that he thought there was some suspicious material within the roof, some under membrane stuff. And uh, as opposed to having them you know, go through and cut the stuff out, he made the call to stop work on the project. And we got IRS Environmental out on the job site to do some uh, abatement and some testing for us. And it, uh, we did find, in fact, that it is or was as best as containing materials. Um, you know, for us, this just goes to show that all of our guys have the ability to walk onto a job site, feel safe, feel empowered to make decisions, and uh, for us, it's just a good example of that. Uh, my name is Jake Evans, been a plumber for 18 years. Well, I would tell a new hire with regards to the stand down policy that it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay to, to stop work. It, in fact, it's his, uh, it's his responsibility to stop work. I mean, he's not going to get in trouble for it. He's, um, you know, if anything, he'll probably get a pat on the back for, you know, for, for, for preventing an accident. When you're out there, you, you know, you got all the PPE, the vest, the hard hat, gloves, and, and safety glasses, um, you know, which I have mine on pretty much all the time because mine are old manized, so I have to wear them to see. Um, I understand when we're doing electric work up in a ceiling, you got to take your hard hat off to squeeze your head up in there sometimes. It's the only way to do it. You know, I understand when you're terminating weenie wire that you got to take your gloves off to terminate little wire, you got fire alarm wire and communication cables that are very small. You're going to have to do that. Um, there is no no real good time that you'll ever be able to convince me of that you need to take your safety glasses off. So, because even when you squeeze your head up in there, you can still have your glasses on. You know, you're you're still young. You don't need magnifiers probably unless you're wearing contacts. Um, you know, I mean that's fortunate. Keep keep your eyes. You know, keep your eyes. Imagine what they're worth. You know, like I use the example of myself all the time. Man, I got a beautiful wife. Wow. Imagine never being able to see that anymore. You know, I mean, that would really suck. You know, so it's like, the heck with the job. It's what you do off when you're not at work. You know, you'll find yourself when you're not at work wearing safety glasses. 
when you're mowing the lawn or doing something because you know you get hit in the face with something and it's kind of like, oh, maybe I had to just you know, do this. Keep all your body parts. I got eight or nine years left until I pull the plug and retire. By then I'll have 35 years in the trade and I've got all my body parts and I've kept myself in good shape. Yeah, I, I want to enjoy my retirement. There's no point in working like a dog for 35 years and then, you know, on the last day doing something stupid and losing a hand, falling and hurting a hip and, or ruining your back and you're slumped over like an old guy and you, know, you can't do anything, you know. Make sure you take care of yourself. We provide you all the safety stuff uh, to use. If you need new safety glasses, let your foreman know. If you see me, hey, Scott, I need a new pair of safety glasses on your next time because I'm constantly going through the building. When your gloves get up, get holes in them, or <laughs> you know, hey, need some, yeah. And with what you'll be doing, you know, you may end up just carrying an extra pair in your toolbox or something because it just comes in handy and they're, they're cheap compared to getting your hands messed up, you know. Any, any cuts, any, any kind of injury at all, let me know, bring it up. You know, don't just think I can put a Band-Aid on it and go home. Because if you got to go to the doctor, you got to go to the doctor. You know, I, I'd rather take, I'd rather have you go to the doctor and have it be nothing, rather than have you go home for the weekend and show up on Monday or, or get a call from them. You know, on, on Monday morning, oh yeah, he's in the hospital because, you know, we'd all look pretty stupid then. You know, so take care of yourself. Do a good job of that. A near miss is basically. Um, an incident that that took place that could have caused an injury. It, it didn't necessarily cause an injury that time, but it surely could have. And you know, a lot of times you'll catch yourself out there saying, "Whoa, man, we got lucky." Well, that's that's a near miss, and it doesn't have to be at work. It could be while you're mowing your lawn or driving your kids to the store. You know, a near miss is, happens all the time. And, Near miss reporting is also very important. If you do incur a, a near miss, uh, they have a policy in place where you can report it. And it's a very good policy because it helps us all learn from that near miss. It, it goes out to the other job sites and a lot of times they learn from it before somebody else makes that same mistake or has that same uh, potential injury. The uh, the one thing I've noticed about McKinstry over the years is uh, they want you to feel comfortable with, with reporting a near miss. Um, they don't utilize it to browbeat you or anything like that. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a learning tool for the rest of our company and we have hundreds and hundreds of employees that can learn from it. And you might potentially save somebody else from being hurt either minor a minor cut or a major injury. Just uh, me personally, I think McKinstry's policies that they have in place right now, not that they could not be improved on, we're always looking to improve uh, our safety culture, but it's, it's, it's definitely leading the industry in the right direction and uh, I believe they're number one. Here at McKinstry, everyone has a right to stop work, whether it's an apprentice out in the field, a delivery driver from the warehouse, or a project manager sitting in the trailer. If the conditions around you make you feel unsafe, stop work immediately. We will back you 100%. As I've told many of my crews, I have a much easier time explaining to the general contractor, the owner of this company, why we missed a schedule because we had a safety stand down, as opposed to telling a GC or the owner of this company why someone's in the hospital. I've had to do both, and the first is much easier than the second. Uh, my name is Keith Booker. I'm a senior project engineer uh, out of the Boise office for McKinstry. Our safety for McKinstry is one of the top priorities um, for both its employees and its subcontractors or anybody who's on the site. Um, being out of the Boise office, we don't have you know, the actual safety you know, personnel in the office with us, so it's up to the on-site construction manager, project engineer, to actually be the one enforcing all the safety codes. Um, so being on the on, you know, off-site, I would strongly suggest keeping up on training. Um, you know, the OSHA classes, OSHA 10, OSHA 30, um, are all excellent classes to be taking so that you can make sure that your site is a 
safe site for multiple people. Um, another one is making sure that your subcontractors are up to speed on the current you know, codes and conditions and if something does happen that they actually report those as quick as possible to the nearest McKinstry personnel. Um, so just staying up on the current codes, conditions, keeping your site clean, safe, um, or just top of the top of the line items of what you want to do for when you're actually running a project. Uh, the biggest thing is the you know accessibility to safety personnel, um, being able to get the correct training. Um, at a lot of the other sites, you know, they kind of you know they'll stick to the generic um, kind of one two threes of training. But with McKinstry, you you have multiple people to go to. Um, and they're always accessible. Uh, if you're whether you're doing a crane pick, you're dealing with asbestos, um, or even PCBs, you know, and lighting fixtures. I mean, you always have somebody with the knowledge of what needs to be done for those particular items. So just being able to have that um, personnel accessible is is one of the greatest things about McKinstry. Hi, I'm Chris Witten, a foreman here with McKinstry. Been in the industry for about 13 years. And uh, one of our safety success stories here at WSU Vet Med was tie-off points. So when we begin the job, it's very difficult to find a place to tie off and, and stay safe while working. So through that process, we talked with the safety department, Landberry specifically, and asked the question what we can do to stay safe while, while doing our work. So what we came up with was a system that anchors into concrete horizontally or vertically and uh, it gives us a tie-off point anywhere we need it. Uh, when we asked the question, the safety department got back to us right away. Um, they got us the tools we needed. We started to do the work within a day, and uh, it's a success. Hi, I'm Scott Hafey. I'm a sheet metal foreman for McKinstry, and I'm going to talk about skinny wheel grinders. Right here we have a tool that sheet metal department you're going to use all the time. And in the past we've had problems because the normal guard that comes with a cordless skinny wheel doesn't fit our wheels and so people have taken them off and gone ahead and used this without the proper guard on it. And we've had a rash of injuries last year according to that. These guards were all made up by the superintendent of sheet metal, Terry Nemitz, and he had them all. So we're all supplied with them and uh, you can't use one of these without a guard on it. That's a new rule and that's going to be the rule from here on out or we'll lose this tool. And uh, so what you have, you have your wheel, your guard, you're always gonna wanna cut like this so the sparks are coming towards you, the, guard, the guard's gonna block most of them and that way the wheel catches or anything, it's gonna go forward. Always use a face shield with this and safety glasses, both are required. And that's about it with the safety, and gloves. And that's about it for the skinny wheel. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I think stretch and flex is a great way to start out your day. I mean, uh, it gets all the, the, the kinks out of your back and your legs before you start. And it's it's paramount in, in accident prevention, you know, muscle strains and you know, back injuries, things like that. And then it gives guys a chance to, you know, uh, socialize a little bit or, or talk about the day or, you know, just kind of gets everybody warmed up, body and mind. Okay, my name is Tom Bramer, I'm a sheet metal worker for McKinstry, and uh, we do this tech flex program, which really in the morning it feels good, getting out of bed, kind of creaky and stiff, it's hairy. It's a way to stretch out, reduce the risk of any kind of uh, strain in your back or legs, and I think it feels pretty good. It, Hi, I'm Dan Thompson. Um, I've been working for McKinstry for about 32 years. Uh, came up through the sheet metal department and now I am a superintendent for the energy department. Um, I'm out at a Vista headquarters in Spokane, Washington. Uh, we've been doing a renovation on their office building for the past four plus years. While it's occupied, there's about 700 of Vista employees that work here. And uh, the reason I work safe is because ultimately I feel I am responsible for the safety of all of our con subcontractors, the McKinstry employees, and the Avista employees that are here on site. And um, safety is pretty crucial in order to make sure that everybody goes home safe at night. And I work safe so I can go home and see my grandkids. <laughs>